Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone. Today is September 29th, 2022, and we have a very special show for you. We're commemorating the two-year anniversary of the passing of a legendary music artist, the incomparable Helen Reddy. We'll be paying tribute to Helen in a number of ways. If you've been following our show from the very beginning, you'll know that we started a comprehensive four-part interview series with Helen Reddy's dear friend and president of the official Helen Reddy fan club, Jim Keaton. That four-part series has been completely remastered to include photos and video clips, and it's being released on all of our platforms today. Jim also appeared on our show with Anju Moon, the director of the Helen Reddy biopic entitled I Am Woman, now appearing on Netflix. And today, Jim is back with the brilliant multi-platinum singer-songwriter Harriet Schock, who is making her third appearance on our show. Harriet wrote several songs recorded by Helen Reddy, including the Grammy-nominated Ain't No Way to Treat a Lady, which she performed live on our show earlier this year. Last month, Harriet returned to our show and honored me by performing a profoundly moving song that she wrote called I Am Yours, which was inspired by the struggles I faced after coming out to my parents. If you haven't heard that song yet, Harriet's performance can be seen on our YouTube channel, and you can download the song on Harriet's website, harrietshock.com. Today, Harriet is honoring us with a performance of her brand new song entitled Because You Lived, inspired by Jim Keaton's deep and abiding 50-year friendship with Helen Reddy. I'm delighted to welcome back to our show my very dear friends, Harriet Chalk and Jim Keaton. Harriet and Jim, thank you so much for being here. Oh, happy to be here. And I'm sure Jim is too. Absolutely, my pleasure. And great to see you, Harriet. Same here, Jim. Jim, it's been two years since Helen Reddy passed away. Tell us how you've processed this profound loss in your life. Well, it's been, it's been interesting. Sometimes it feels like it was just yesterday. And sometimes it feels like it's been years. One of the things that I've been doing is because we moved to Florida and I've been going through all of the things that I had packed for years is reliving so many wonderful memories with Helen and with other fan club members. It's been, it's been a wonderful experience. And I'm hearing from a lot of people that I hadn't heard from before about the meaning of Helen in their life. So it's, it's just helping me to sort of regenerate my own feelings and to appreciate that other people are there with me. Harriet, tell us about your friendship with Helen. Well, I met Helen when she generously flew me to Las Vegas. Apparently it was a tradition that someone else started with her when she wrote a song that that person recorded. And so she flew me there and introduced me from the stage as the writer of Ain't No Way to Treat a Lady, I don't think she had recorded Mama yet. So it was that song she introduced me as the writer of. And I thought how gracious of her to do that. Plus, I remember having lamb chops at the wherever they put me up in the hotel. And it was they were flown in from Paris. And I thought, this, this is the life, you know. But anyway... Her show was so wonderful, and every show she did while I was there, I saw. And then when she was host of the Midnight Special, she had me on as a guest, and we became friends. I didn't see her for quite a while later after that, but then I I saw her again when she was at the motion picture home. We had lunch, and then I would Zoom with her later on, when that was the only way I could contact her. But she was not only pivotal in my career, she was wonderful in my life, as she was in so many other people's lives. Now, Jim, as I mentioned in my introduction, we filmed a four-part series about Helen, which immediately went viral on the internet. Were you surprised by the public response to those interviews and by the continuing interest in Helen and her music? I was surprised that that people wanted to hear me talk about Helen. I wasn't surprised that they were still interested in Helen and her music. 
but the, the the response has been so much more than I expected. I'm hearing from people from all over the world asking questions, asking a lot of follow-up questions. And it's just been absolutely wonderful to be able to, to make sure that Helen's name remains current. Don't you find it amazing that people can feel such a close connection with someone they've never met? I do. And I think that's interesting. One of the interesting questions I get a lot is how could someone feel so affected by her loss, by the loss of her when they never met her? And I just tell them that because she was so important in so many people's lives, that it's a constant that's no longer there. And it's, it's uh, like any loss. It affects us each differently and each in, in different ways. But the way we process it, is, is basically dealing with the loss that, of the person that has gone, no matter how well we knew them or what impact they had on us. Helen had a huge impact on a lot of people, and it just shows up every day in my email. I want to talk about Harriet's new song, Because You Lived. And before we see Harriet's performance, I'd like you, Jim, to give us the background about how you connected with Helen and how that connection changed your life so that we can understand the lyrics we were about to hear. Well, I, was, I grew up in the hills of West Virginia and I knew from a very early age that I was gay. My mother was born again, Pentecostal, snake handling, very, very fundamentalist, and so was my father. And we, I was taught from a very early age that being gay meant that you were gonna go straight to hell. And I thought that the only way to deal with that is since I'm going to hell anyway, is kill myself. And I thought, before I do that, I want somebody to know what I'm going through. And I figured that Helen would never, I would never meet her, so it wouldn't make any difference. So I wrote her a letter, and I told her everything that I'd ever thought about being gay, about being alone, about being lonely, about being depressed, and told her that I was going to get rid of those feelings by basically just taking my life and not having to deal with it anymore. And she wrote back. And it changed my life. The fact that she took the time, someone who was the biggest selling female vocalist in the world at the time, took the time to respond to me meant that I must not be all that bad. And it gave me the courage I needed to reach out for help. And from that point on, it was just, it was incredible, the growth and the experiences I've had since that moment, that pivotal moment of writing a letter when I thought I was at my end. Now, it's more than that, though. In order to understand the lyrics that we're about to hear, Helen inspired you in a very specific way, professionally, correct? Yes. She, well, because she took the time to reach out to me at a time when I was in a position where I couldn't reach out to anybody because we had no phones, we had no electricity, no running water, no indoor plumbing. I mean, we were back in the hills, so there was nobody to reach out to. And I always thought that if, if I can be that for somebody else, then I want to do that. And I started working at the Arlington County, Virginia 911 Center in 1979. But another interesting thing there, I got that job totally by accident. I went with a friend to drop off an application and the HR person, she knew, and she said, well, do you have anything he could do? And he asked me if I could type 20 words a minute. I said, yes. I took the test. I passed it. I went for the interview that day and I was hired. That's never happened before and never happened since. That was on a Friday. I started on a Monday. So I want people, when you're listening to this song, to keep in mind that Jim's career has been involved with helping people in distress as a 911 dispatcher. Now, before we hear from Harriet about her songwriting process, I'm inviting you all to sit back, relax, and watch the incredibly talented Harriet Shock performing her brand new single, because you lived. When I was on the verge of my darkest decision, you sang I am woman on my television. I found an address and I wrote you that day. I thought she'll never answer. No way. Your response cut through depression like a knife And 50 years ago, you saved my life We gave and gave and gave to one another And I'm what I am from what we were to each other Because 
Because you lived, I live. Because you gave, I give. I built on this loving foundation. And crisis hotline became my life's occupation. I've intervened for thousands who were withering on the vine. I saved these precious lives like you saved mine. Each day I help the broken hearts and dejected, and I do my best to make them feel respected. At night I would fill my cup at your show. You knew I'd be there front row and though the day i spent had taken quite a toll i would get the strength to help another soul because you lived i live because you gave i give i built on this loving foundation and crisis hotline became my life's occupation. I've intervened for thousands who were withering on the vine. I saved these precious lives like you saved mine. So much I've done, I wouldn't have. Life is so sweet, I just have to laugh. Memories of you and me in the car wind in our hair wherever we are your glorious voice your beautiful face our friendship goes beyond time and space we gave and gave and gave to one another and i'm what i am from what we were to each other because you lived I live because you gave, I give. I intervene for thousands who were withering on the vine. I save these precious lives like you saved mine. Wow, just wow. Harriet, I must tell you that I've listened to this song at least a dozen times, and I cry every time. Congratulations on writing such a masterpiece. It's an instant classic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I interviewed Jim extensively, and I was so moved by the story that because Helen intervened for his life, he helped others. I mean, that was such a wonderful story. And in the process of talking to Jim, he actually said one time, this phrase is coming to me because you lived. And I thought, wow, if this story isn't a song, I'm not a songwriter. <laughs> it's really such an inspiring story that that's why I think people respond to it is I just told the story. Well, you have an uncanny ability to take a story that someone tells you and convert it into a magical musical experience. I want you to know, I played the song for a friend of mine and the response was, this song exemplifies karma. Did you think of that when you were writing it? I did see the connection between Helen saving Jim's life and Jim saving other lives, but I never thought of it as karma, but that is a very good explanation. It's not only an explanation, it's the exemplification of what karma is. And I just can't wait for the whole world to hear that song. But first, of course, I have to ask Jim, what was your reaction to the song when you first heard it? This is tough. Speechless. I, I'm, I mean, I was speechless, crying like I am now. 
And I, it just captured the essence of what Helen meant to me and how I intended to live my life after meeting her. And I just speechless. I, 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 as Harriet remembers, I, I didn't know what to say. I, there was nothing I could say. Well, I've asked you before whether you feel Helen's presence in your life. Did you feel her presence when you listened to the song? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's like all those memories came flooding back. And it was like she was sitting there next to me listening to it. Harriet, you performed because you lived for the first time in concert on August 27th. How did the audience react? Oh, well, it was interesting because it was such a new song that the band didn't know it yet. I have cello, violin, flute, bass, and Andrea singing backup. But they didn't have a chance to learn it. So I sang it along with Andrea at playing the piano. I played the piano and she sang backup. And I wasn't aware that the band was crying until afterwards people told me. So they were very moved by the song and so was the audience. It was the last song I sang. And I, I love singing this song because, you know, when I interviewed Jim, he told me wonderful pictures. You know, I have to have pictures in my songs, as you know, Harvey, because I wrote a song for you. And so I could give me pictures. And so he talked about how they rode in the car with the top down and from moon shadows and all of the places they went and and how happy he is now with Mark and the cats and, you know, and life is sweet, you know. So I just, I took what he said and, you know, I felt strongly for Helen too. So it was a kind of a combined feeling of, of our love for her, but mostly Jim. You have a documentary coming out in a few months about your life and career, Harriet. I really hope that your new songs, I Am Yours, and Because You Lived will be featured in the movie. It's hard to know because Tom Solari got the idea to even make the film when he saw a show of mine three years ago. And the songs I did then were what inspired the movie, but he loves these two new songs and he has shot them a couple of times. So they may end up in there. I certainly hope they will, but songs are three to four minutes and a movie is 90 minutes, you can't get a lot of songs in there all the way through. And my songs are not good as song bites. So I'm not sure how it's going to work. Have you been affected in terms of your songwriting as an artist by these last two songs that you've written, which were something different for you? You took someone else's story and you've composed these songs. You've done that for films, I know. But I sense a shift in the quality of your songwriting since I've heard these last two songs. Do you feel a difference? Well, when I was on 20th Century Records, no one could decide what the single was. Everyone had a different viewpoint. So when Tom interviews people, he frequently says, what is your favorite song of Harriet's? And pretty much there is no consensus. However, I feel as a songwriter that these songs are special to me, not just because they're my new babies, you know how you love the new ones anyway, but because I feel I, I don't believe in channeling people, but if, but if I did, I was definitely channeling you and Jim in these songs because, you know, when I wrote the theme song, the love theme song for The Last Dragon, the Motown movie, where I had to be in the character of a young African-American man who was a virgin and falling in love for the first time and studying Kung Fu. Well, the only thing I had in common with him was that I had fallen in love with him for the first time. So we, Misha Siegel and I wrote First Time on a Ferris Wheel that 30 people have sung. And yes, it is a special song that I can identify with, but to have written something about a real person's life twice, 
that is really something. There's so much responsibility, I feel, to get it right and to get their real life embodied in the melody as well as the song. That yes, this was a burden I lovingly took on. I'm I'm not sure I want Tom to offer that next time. Like Harry will write a song for you because I told him, I said, these two people had really interesting lives. I'm not sure, you know, Julie Goldstein's life is going to be as interesting as Harvey and Jim. So you may not want to offer it again. Well, I've been talking about you to so many people. And one of my friends said that they have an idea for your next album. They think you should do an album about the people you've admired. It could be Eleanor Roosevelt, it could be Obama, it could be another artist, but a a tribute album of original songs based on the lives of people that you really do admire. It's a concept I had never thought of before, and I wanted to pass it on to you. Well, I would certainly consider that, except that I have like 10 other songs that people want me to record because they've heard them in concert and don't have a way of hearing them. But yeah, I would certainly keep that under advisement. And, you know, I I would only hope the people I admire are also admired by others because I have a rather eclectic taste. Well, that's what we love about you. So the obvious (laughs) next, the, the obvious next question is when can we expect a new album? The first thing we have to do is to get the Zoom interviews Tom Solari, who's making the film, couldn't get in person because people live far away, like my friend Bini in Austria and you, Harvey, and you know various people. So that has to be done. Then he has to edit enough to go to phase three, which is editing. And so I maybe when he's editing, I could make the album. That's a thought. So maybe a few months. I'm looking forward to that immensely, as are all your fans. I want to tell our viewers that you can download Harriet's new song, Because You Lived, by going to harrietshock.com. And while you're at it, don't forget to download I Am Yours, which, in my opinion, is one of the most redemptive and healing songs ever written. And don't forget to watch the brand new remastered four-part series about Helen Reddy featuring Jim Keaton, which is now available on all of our platforms. Well, Harriet and Jim, it's been such an honor to have you back on our show. Harriet, I wish you the best of luck with both new songs and the documentary, and I can't wait to hear the new album. Thank you both so much for taking the time to appear on our show. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Yes, and wonderful to see Jim and you, Harvey. And the feeling is mutual. Our guests have been the brilliant and prolific singer-songwriter Harriet Shock with Jim Keaton, president of the official Helen Reddy fan club. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to our producer, Steve Silver, and to my team in LA and the UK. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.